Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Assalamu alaikum, peace be to you. I will start first by asking uh, Robert Makah to help us uh, unveil the banner, Black Lives Matter. Uh, so go ahead, Robert. Thank you. It is truly hard to believe that only one month has passed since the murder of George Floyd under the knee of a police officer from Minneapolis. So much has happened since his death. So much has happened because of his death. From Miami to Los Angeles, to New York City, to right here in Washington, D.C. Protesters have filled the streets and demanded an end to racist police violence. From city halls across our nation to the halls of Congress in our nation's capital, political leaders have debated important criminal justice reform proposals that were once considered radical. From the deep south to the north of this country, communities have condemned and removed historic monuments that celebrated and continue to celebrate the evil of white supremacy, including the enslavement of black Americans and the genocide of indigenous Americans. Finally, some, though not nearly enough, houses of worship, corporations, and athletic leagues have expressed solidarity with the black community and taken steps to confront anti-black racism in their midst. All of these events can be traced back to the outrage sparked by the horrific murder of George Floyd. But let's be clear, although we were all outraged by George Floyd's murder, we were not only outraged because of George Floyd's murder. We were and are outraged because George Floyd was simply the latest in a long line of black men and women murdered by police officers, murdered by police officers who were operating within a racist system that regularly, disproportionately, and inevitably takes black lives. The names of those lost black lives appear on the banner behind me. Tamir Rice, who would have turned 18 years old today, Eric Garner, Richard Brooks, Brianna Taylor, Imam Lukman Abdullah, Amadou Diallo, to name just a few. But there are so many more names that could not fit on this banner. So many more names of victims we don't know because their murders were not captured in a viral video. Whether we know or don't know their names, we must ensure that their deaths were not in vain. And we can help do that by finally and frankly confronting anti-black racism, especially in policing. To that end, CARE today calls on Congress to immediately pass the Justice in Policing Act. Although this legislation is not perfect, and needs to go much further, it is an important first step. Today, CARE is also releasing its own proposal for radical reform to our criminal justice system. The policy statement you have in your hands has already been distributed to tens of thousands of Americans, including Muslim Americans, who will fight for these policy reforms at the local, state, and federal level in the months and years to come, God willing. As Muslim Americans, we have a special obligation to combat anti-black racism. As God says in the Quran, the various languages and colors of humankind are divine blessings, not signs of superiority or inferiority. As Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said more than 1,400 years ago, 
No white person is better than a black person. And no black person is better than a white person. And no person is better than any other person on account on their race, of their race. And as, a, as our brother Malcolm X, God bless his soul, taught, anti-black racism is a moral disease that must be confronted and cleansed from the heart of America in order for our country to have a chance of healing and living up to the claim of liberty and justice for all. As civil rights activists, as Americans, as human beings, and as Muslims, we are individually and collectively committed to fighting anti-black racism, whether it appears in a family, a community, a society, or even at the highest level of government authority. May God grant us success in our efforts to promote justice for black Americans and for all.